This is Don Gray from Cross Point Church uh, coming to you, and uh, we're going to talk about um, basically Forrest Gump in the Old Testament. And these are times of adversity. And in times of adversity, we need a friend. A friend maybe like Forrest Gump. So let's pray. Father, we just pray that you would... Uh, uh, give us comfort, Lord, and we would know that you are near, that you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And Lord, that you're going to be with us. You said, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth, Lord, to the ends of the age. And we just pray that uh, we would rest in this truth. And Lord, that you would teach us today uh, the things that we need to know, Lord, that we might be true friends uh, with one another, Lord, and we might realize that you are our, our friend who sticks close than a brother. Okay, so Forrest Gump is um, you know, a famous movie. I'm sure you've all watched it. And there's some famous quotes from Forrest Gump like, life is a box of chocolates and stupid is as stupid does. But my personal favorite is, as I say to Becky sometimes, I'm not a very small man, Becky, and well, I meant Jenny, but uh, uh, we, uh, we can look at for the, the life of Forrest Gump, and it does relate and does parallel the book of Ruth in so many ways. So uh, the four, four main ways that I want to talk about is number one, friendship, two, being authentic. Three, virtuous. Ruth was a virtuous woman. And number four, that she was praised. So in Forrest Gump, we see all four of these things, these same things. So a uh, couple things about the book of Ruth. You got you to gotta think about this, how amazing the book of Ruth is. Do you realize that it's the only book in the Bible that is named after a Gentile. And, and not only that, there's only two books in the Bible that are named after women, and that's Esther and the book of Ruth. Also, the book of Ruth is read at, at many synagogues. I don't know about all of them, but on, in many synagogues, it's, it, the book of Ruth is read on the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Shavuot, Shavuot I believe is how you say it. And so every Feast of Pentecost that they have, they read this book. Why is it? I mean, after all, Ruth was a Gentile, like we said. Not only that, but she was a Moabite. And let me read you something in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse uh, 3. It talks about the Moabites. So Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 3, it says, An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way, when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. So, Ruth, five times in the book of Ruth, she's called a Moabite, or Moabitess. So, she was a Moabite. And if you think about it, where did Moab come from? It came from Lot. Um, Lot had an incestuous relationship with his two daughters, and from them came the Ammonites and the Moabites. And they were the enemies of God. They, they tried, they tried, they hired Balak to curse Israel, and uh, they seduced Israel and, and caused all kinds of trouble. So they were hated foreigners. And yet we look at the book of Ruth, and we read through it, and we find... Uh, Ruth being praised 
She was praised by the people of the city. She was praised by Boaz. And she was praised by the elders and the women that surrounded her. So why was she praised? Four main things. Because she was a friend. She was a true friend. Because she was authentic. And when you're authentic, you become vulnerable. But she was a true friend. She was authentic. She was virtuous. And she was praised. Number one, she was a friend. And when you read through the book of Ruth, there, there's different names. And they all mean something. And that is so tied in with what the book of Ruth is all about. You have Elimelech, who, who uh, took his wife, Naomi, and they had two children, Malon and Kilion, who uh, left Israel, they left Bethlehem, and they went into Moab. Well, Elimelech means, my God is king. And then they had two sons, Malon and Kilion, which meant, uh, Malon meant uh, sick, and uh, Kilion meant, meant wasting or, or uh, pining. So, so these different names, and that's exactly what they did. They were sick and they died. Elimelech, my God is king, but he left the place where God was king and went to a foreign land. Then you have the woman named Naomi, or Naomi, whatever you want to say. She, her name meant pleasant. And her life was pleasant until all these things happened to her. And she comes back and she says, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, because she was bitter. And Mara means bitter. Call me bitter. But what does, the, what does Ruth mean? What does the name Ruth mean? It means friend. It means friendship. It means beauty. And of course, that describes her perfectly. And what Naomi needed was she needed a friend. And that's what Ruth was. Now, this is considered a beautiful piece of literature. A fellow uh, named Nick Morgan, he talks about great types of literature. And, and he says it's ba there's basically five types of great literature. These are archetypes. And he, he categorizes them in five, five different areas. Number one, love story. Number two, a story of revenge. Number three, rags to riches. Number four, strangers in a strange land. And number five, he calls holy grail, which means connecting with something that is, that is greater or higher than you. And I think we can see a lot of these things, most of these things are all in the book of Ruth. Maybe not revenge, but certainly it's a love story. It's not a Hallmark love story, <laughs> but it's a love story. And uh, it's, it's a story of the love between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law, not something that you see in a Hallmark movie. But it's also a love story between Ruth and Boaz. And also it's a love story between uh, God and Israel. And so it's a love story. It's certainly a rags to riches story because Ruth and Naomi are, are, are destitute. They don't have anything. And yet at the end, they have all the riches of a worthy, wealthy man named Boaz. And of course, Ruth was a stranger in a strange land. And of course, the ending of it is uh, connecting with something that's higher than themselves, connecting with the God of Israel. So, let's look at friendship, first of all. And I'm going to touch on a few things, just a few things about friendship. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, it says this in verse, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. The first thing about friendship is, is commitment. It says this in Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. 
So a friend is someone who's committed. If you have somebody that, that's just your friend when you have, when things are going well, when you have money, it says, you know, the wealthy man, he has lots of friends. But they're not real friends because they don't love at all times. They only love when it's going to benefit them. But a true friend will love at all times. They are committed. Now, one thing about the, the show, Forrest Gump, certainly you see is that he was committed to his friends. You know, he had a friend named Bubba, uh, Bubba Shrimp, and uh, what did he do? He went and he, Bubba, I think, died, and, and he went and he went shrimping and helped out the family. He, he, was, uh, he was committed to his friend Bubba. And then you had Lieutenant Dan, who, who uh, he saved his life in Vietnam, uh, but he was bitter, terribly bitter about what happened to him. And what Lieutenant Dan needed is just what Naomi needed. She needed a friend, and Lieutenant Dan needed a friend because he was bitter about his loss. And it took him a long time to finally thank Forrest for saving his life because, you know, he wished he had died there. But then finally he thanked him. And then there's a scene in the movie where uh, Lieutenant Dan thanks him and, and then he, he jumps off a boat to go swimming and, and, and Forrest says, you know, he, he thinks that maybe he made his peace with God also and not just with, with uh, Forrest. And so uh, Forrest was, was a good friend. And most of all, most of all, Forrest was a good friend to a person like Jenny, who was totally, totally uh, unfaithful, of course, to him, and, uh, but he was totally committed to him. She was the one who hurt him the most. So we have in the book of Ruth, we have the commitment of Ruth. She says this, when Naomi said, go back. In verse 16 of chapter one, Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part me and from you, or from thee, from and me. So she was totally committed to her friendship. Okay, so that's that's a true friend. A, a true friend is loves at all times. And also, there was a friendship between Naomi and Ruth. They. Um, they were true, true friends uh, because they were faithful, faithful to one another. Now, Naomi, uh, she, uh, she, she, I think she's the one who taught Ruth about her God, about the Lord. And, and Ruth uses the name of the Lord. She says, uh, the Lord so do so more and, and more to me if I, if, I don't, uh, if I don't stay with you forever. And so she calls on the name of the Lord. And how does she know about the Lord? But probably, I'm, I'm sure, through Ruth. And so they had this common uh, thing between the two, and that was their faith in God. So in, in Proverbs chapter 27, if you go there, it talks, it, the chapter has quite a bit about true friendship. And it says in verse 6, chapter 27, verse 6, it says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. And in their friendship, uh, Naomi tells Ruth, she said, hey, listen. First she leaves. She leaves and she's going with Orpah and Naomi. And she gets a certain distance and she realizes something. She's got these two girls going with her, and they said they're going to go with her. And she said, wait a minute, I don't have anything for you. And that's what she tells them. I have nothing. I have no more children. I don't have any hope. I don't have an inheritance. 
I don't have a husband. I have nothing to give you. And she told them the truth because she says, I want what's best for you. And, and she was a true friend and she said things that, uh, uh, that were true. They may have hurt, but, but she wanted what was best. And it says in chapter 27, is faithful are the wounds of a friend. And those words, I'm sure, would hurt, but they were true. And as friends, we should be faithful. We should be truthful to one another, even if it hurts. And sometimes we don't tell people the truth because we don't want to learn their, lose their friendship because we're worried about how it's going to affect us more than we're worried about how it's going to affect them. So a true friend is faithful. A true friend also is careful. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 14, it says this, He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising in the, early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. So if you get up early in the morning and you go to somebody else who's sleeping and you start yelling things out and you say, good morning, and it is going to, to them, it's going to feel like, you know, what are you doing? You know, I'm sleeping and, and you're, you're not very careful about how I feel about that. And so a true friend is careful about what they say and what, they'll, what they do, how it's going to affect them. So... Um, So that's Proverbs chapter 27. So those are three things, and there's many more things about friendship uh, that, that are important, but we'll, we just hit on those three. The next thing about uh, Ruth is that she was authentic, like Forrest was authentic. He said, like I quoted earlier, I'm not a very smart man. Jenny, he knew what he was. He knew that, that he had some deficiencies, but he, he owned them. And when you're authentic, then you, you're real with people. You're honest with people. And when you're real and you're honest, sometimes that makes you vulnerable. But he was comfortable in his own skin. So let me ask you this, are you comfortable in your own skin, how you really are? Are you comfortable, are you willing to let people know, hey, I'm not that smart, or you know, I have this weakness, or I've got that weakness. And, and Ruth, she says this, let's be good to look at Ruth, she, she had some issues, of course she was a Moabite. So in Ruth, um, chapter, let's see, I didn't have it here. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 10. And she's talking to Boaz. It says, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. I'm a stranger. I'm a foreigner. I don't, I'm not like your people. I'm not like your maidservants. And then in, in verse 13, then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me and for thy, and that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like one of thine handmaidens. Now she was a Moabite but she owned it. She knew her shortcomings. She knew where she stood. And she was, she was, she owned it. And we need to be like that. We need to be vulnerable. And that's just one of the toughest things to be is to be authentic, to be vulnerable with people. So, so she was, uh, she was authentic, but she was humble. And, but that doesn't exactly mean that she was weak. I think she was a very strong person. And I think that the, the, the word you can use for that is meekness. 
Now, meekness does not, we have a connotation like it means weak, and that is not what it means. What it means is to be, to be uh, uh, humble, even though you're, you're strong, you're, you're humble and you're, you're, you're um, gracious to other people. Let me give you a couple examples. Abraham was meek. In, in Genesis chapter 13, um, Abraham, his, his servants had problems with Lot's servants. And they were arguing, and he said to Lot, he said, listen, Lot, he said, the whole land's before us. If you go to the right hand, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Now, he had power. He, had, he, had, he was the elder person. He could have chosen what he wanted, but no, he was me. And he deferred over to Lot. So that's, that's being me. Even though you have the power, you, you let someone else, you, you, you care about what they think. David, in 2 Samuel chapter 16, he, uh, he's been fleeing from Absalom, and this guy named Shimei comes out and starts cursing him. And Abishai, his main guy, says, listen, let me take off that, his head, you know, let me do something. And, and David would not let him, even though he could have. He says, listen, let him curse. He says, my own son is out to kill me, and should not this Benjamin might, should he not also? He said, maybe God will turn this curse into a blessing. And so David had strength, but he resisted the strength, and he was gracious to Shimei. But of course, our greatest example of meekness is Jesus Christ. In Zechariah chapter 9, it says this. It's prophesied about Jesus. It says in verse 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. And then it says, Lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon the colt of a donkey. So even though he was the king, even though he had salvation and he had power, he came lowly. Jesus talks about himself. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says this. Listen to this. Come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So Jesus was meek, and uh, uh, he was our good example of that. And, and the, the, the Beatitudes that the Bible says, Jesus said, blessed are the meek. Those that are strong, but they restrain themselves. And so... That's, that's characteristic uh, uh, of Ruth. And then thirdly, she was a virtuous woman. And in Proverbs chapter 21, or Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31 is the chapter on a virtuous woman. And of course, if you go to the, the story of uh, Forrest Gump, uh, he, he was a virtuous person. He had, all, he had all these different qualities. And the first quality is in, in Proverbs chapter 31, verse, well, start off in verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. The first thing you know about a virtuous woman is she's trustworthy. She can be trustworthy. She can be trusted. And Ruth, she left everything and followed Naomi, and she was going to help her out. And she was trustworthy. Forrest was trustworthy. He, he could be trusted as a friend. And the second thing is about this virtuous woman is uh, verses 13 through, uh, it goes on through 20 or 20 beyond that. But it says this in verse 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. 
So a, a virtuous person is one who's willing to work. And, and of course, in Forrest Gump, he worked the shrimp boat. He, he did what he needed. He helped Jenny out when she needed, and he was willing to work. And so if we look at the book of Ruth, you can see in chapter 2, it says, And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. He said, Go on, go to the fields. And, and she went and worked. So she did what she could. And we're, we're, we're kind of in a crisis right now in our country. A lot of us don't know what to do. But we do what we can. Figure out what you can do and do it. Work willingly. So she, she worked willingly. And then verse 7, it says this. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. So she worked all day, but not only that, but she worked all through the barley harvest and all through the wheat harvest. She was willing to to work. Not only that, a virtuous person, the next thing about them is that they're kind. Um, in uh, Proverbs 31, verse 20, it says this, She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. So she was real, a virtuous person who's willing to help out someone who's in need. And of course, Naomi was in need. And there's going to be people around us that are going to be in a need. And we need to reach forth our hands and do what we can. So then, fourthly, is the, the virtuous person is praised. If you, if you look at the end of this chapter, it says this. In verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And so, if you watch the story of Forrest Gump, who praised him? I think, you know, he had President Kennedy. He had an award. He had LBJ, Nixon. They were, he was always praised, and he didn't really think too much. He wasn't out for that, but he got the praise. In the book of Ruth, in chapter 2, in verse 11, it says this, Boaz praises her. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath been fully showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come to a people which thou knewest not heretofore. And he, she, he praises her for what she did there. In verse, chapter 3, verse 11, it says this, and now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requires. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. So all the people of the city knew that she was a virtuous woman. But not only that, in chapter 4 and verse 11, it says this, And all the people that were in the gate, and the elders said, Now the, the elders of the people, the the, the big wigs of the city. He said, We are witnesses. Make the woman that is come into thy house like Rachel and Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephrata, and be famous in Bethlehem. And in verse 15, the women of the city said this, And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age, talking about the child that was born, for thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him. So all the people of the city, all the elders of the city, and the one that she cared about most, Boaz, they all did 
praise her. She was a virtuous woman. So what about us? Now, some of this can be kind of crushing to us. If we, uh, if we think, well, I don't really measure up to that. And I'm not a friend I ought to be. I'm not, uh, I'm not like that. And I'm, I'm so, you know, I've fallen. I'm more like Naomi. And of course, that's the whole, the key. In this book, we are more like Naomi. We are the ones that have, have issues, but we have a friend. And we have a friend. We need a friend. And Naomi had Ruth. We've got a friend. We've got a true friend. We've got an authentic friend. We've got a virtuous friend. We've got a friend who deserves to be praised. In John chapter 15, verse 15, it says this. Jesus said this, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And so we've got a friend, a true friend, in Jesus Christ. And he's the one that we need to rely on. And, and think of ourselves, because of what he's done, we can also be a true friend to other people. And, and uh, he's the one who makes us righteous. He's the one who saved us. And he is the friend that we need. And so we need to think about this. Right now, think about it. How can you be a friend, a true friend? Um, not to make yourself righteous, but because we do have a true friend. And Jesus, like, like Ruth, she said, I'll never leave you. I'm going to be with you forever. And, and Jesus said, I will never leave, with, leave you. In, in Matthew chapter 28, he said, uh, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And in Hebrews chapter 13, he says, uh, that, that uh, I'm your friend. Let's see, I'll read it for you. Hebrews chapter 13. And uh, it said, he said this, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me because of this friend. So let's pray for one another. Let's try to try to imitate Jesus as much as possible. But remember that, that he is the true friend that we need. So let's pray. Father, we do thank you that uh, you are our true friend. And Lord, you cared for us. And Lord, you stuck with us when we were unfaithful, when we were uh, going astray, when we were enemies of you. You Stuck, stu stood with us, Lord, like, like Ruth, she stood with Naomi, Lord, and, and Lord, we uh, just thank you that you are a friend who sticks closer than a brother, and Lord, help us also to imitate that, and Lord, be friends to people when they're not easy to be friends with, Lord, help us to endure uh, with patiently um, sometimes when people are going through things and they're, they can be a uh, uh, be, be a little rough to be around. Lord, just help us to be true friends and uh, Lord, to, to, uh, to trust in you through hard times. We ask in Jesus' name.